In the first part of this presentation, we have understood the characteristics of money and crypto money and the differences between the two. We have been through an overview of Bitcoin, understanding the main features of this crypto money and the characteristics of blockchain, Bitcoin's underlying infrastructure. We will today focus on what is called blockchain v2, also called smart contracts. Before we continue, uh, let's have a short summary on, on what we have already seen. What are the main roles of money? Money is a medium of exchange. It is also a measure of value and a store of value. What are the main characteristics of money? Money is durable, divisible, transportable, and has no counterfeits. What are the main characteristics of a crypto money? Trust without intermediary, speed, anonymity, and low transaction fees. What are the main characteristics of a Bitcoin network? A Bitcoin network provides the distribution, non-repudiation, anonymity, and is fast, at least compared to traditional uh, payment networks. What are the main benefits of a blockchain network? A blockchain network is solving the double spending problem. It's enabling trust via crypto proof. It is resilient. It is fast, it is anonymous, and it is a shared ledger where all the participants can see the same transactions. Before entering the core topic, it is important to understand what is one of the main pain points in financial services and why blockchain is relevant there. Let's have a look at three very common banking businesses. Correspondent banking. The payer goes through a number of banks before reaching out the payee. Securities. There is quite a large number of intermediaries between the buyer and the seller. Financial products. The life cycle of those products, which can be up to 30 years long, has to be synchronized between the buyer and the seller. Let's play at Riddle. What have in common the, those use cases? They have in common the extensive use of messages to synchronize together the different parts of the ecosystem. These messages are sent to notify the counterpart system of a change. Because data is duplicated in different places, there is no guarantee that those places are in sync. Therefore, we need reconciliation between systems to make sure that the different parties are not out of sync. The main benefit the blockchain infrastructure is bringing is that by design, the database is shared. There is no duplication anymore. The data is stored once and only once and available for all parties. There is no need to reconcile any more different parties together. A study has shown that solving this problem could lead to a saving of 20 billion per year for the entire financial service industry. The smart contracts built on top of a blockchain database bring the capacity of programmable money. They can be used to describe, for example, all the terms and conditions of a financial product and option, for example. Again, having only one instance of this product in the database will allow <coughs> the parties to have at all times the same view on the product. will develop here is to show how the technology which has been developed for Bitcoin can be reused for other purposes. We'll see that the principles that Nakamoto was already mentioning in his paper have a ra wider range than only cryptocurrencies. As seen earlier, the blockchain architecture itself brings some key features. It prevents double spending. It ensures trust using cryptographic proof. It is fully distributed to ensure resilience and trust. It is fast and real-time. 
it preserves anonymity and more importantly shares among all participants the exchange transactions. Those features can be very useful for transacting something else than plain money. This is what the industry calls blockchain v2. Reuse the blockchain features for transacting all types of assets. As seen earlier, the blockchain does not manage balances but transactions. The transactions are chained one after the other. Selling a Bitcoin means that you allocate to another address previous transactions, so-called unspent transactions. What is exchanged is not money but transactions, which makes this technology very powerful and versatile. Transactions could be on anything, and this is what has started with the Color Coins application. In Colored Coins, even though the transactions are made upon Bitcoins, in reality, it is agreed among the Color Coin participants that these transactions are proxy to other assets than Bitcoin. Of course, if this asset is a physical one or a virtual one existing outside the Bitcoin infrastructure, Creating proxies raises the question of making sure that the proxy and the external asset are in sync. As you can see on this table, blockchain technology can be really versatile. Projects have been created in nearly all industries to leverage the blockchain concepts. Wherever there is a need for collaboration, trust without intermediary, complex interaction between parties. Blockchain is a technology of choice. As you can see on this table, financial services is not by far the only area where blockchain is relevant. Public records is a domain where blockchain technology is fully relevant. In a blockchain database, data is immutable, ensuring a full traceability along the transactions. Another very promising area is trade finance, where complex multi-signature escrow agreements are in place. Blockchain brings there the synchronization capacity among the different parties. We are going to detail here some of the possible use cases in the financial market. There are quite a few use cases because there are a number of middlemen in the financial services industry which are enabling trust between the counterparts. The as the blockchain is by design enabling trust between counterparts without a middleman, it impacts significantly the financial services industry. The payment use case is the most obvious. Bitcoin has been enabling direct payments between counterparts for years. The transaction flows directly from the buyer to the seller without a man in the middle. This reduces costs and increases speed, as we have seen earlier. Clearing and settlement is a huge business, which could be optimized using blockchain. As all the transactions are shared among participants and the content is verified, settlement would be much more straightforward using the blockchain architecture. As the blockchain transactions could be expanded for representing more than only a flow of money, but also represent the whole product life cycle, the world of security settlement is at risk. Since blockchain is a replicated shared database, by design there is no possible discrepancy between the two sides of a transaction. By the way, this benefit could be huge even internally within large organizations. Large banks have a number of branches which trade together in order to centralize risk and liquidity. All the mirroring and replication processes they have could be replaced by an internal blockchain sharing the information among the different branches. What blockchain has brought for payment can be extended with blockchain V2 to all type of financial products. Implementing with smart contracts the whole product life cycle in blo the blockchain will allow to trade directly in peer-to-peer -peer any kind of product, OTC or listed. Servicing of instruments is very costly. Blockchain will dramatically simplify this work. 
For example, if securities are represented in a blockchain in a similar way as a cryptocurrency, it becomes obvious to limit the number of securities in circulation to what has been issued. It is also much easier to determine where those securities are. Detaching coupons is also much easier if this is implemented as a blockchain contract. Regulatory reporting is also simplified in the sense that the transaction history is public, fully transparent and accessible to regulators. Cryptography is ensuring that the customer has the right identity. As soon as the KYC process has been performed, the customer has a crypto identity within the blockchain, which avoids to store other sensitive data. This diagram details the flow between entities for a payment from the US to the EU and the costs associated with it. Without entering in the details, we can see that the transaction is quite expensive, goes through a number of steps and takes around five days to be completed, generating additional risks. The international payment system is quite inefficient, both in terms of costs and delay, and a more direct connection between the sender and the receiver could make a lot of sense. In this direction, optimization can be seen at two levels of disruption. A moderate disruption would optimize the way the existing actors are transacting, and a larger disruption would let the two counterparts transacting together without any intermediary. Let's have a look at those two scenarios. In the first scenario, the existing actors interact more efficiently using a blockchain infrastructure like the one provided by Ripple, for example. The Ripple network is based on a blockchain technology and connects banks together, ensuring the needed FX conversion in the middle. The optimization comes from a faster transfer done in seconds instead of days, a limited risk and a lower cost. In the second scenario, the disruption could be much bigger for the existing actors. In this scenario, the sender and the receiver could directly interact over a public network like Bitcoin. To be noted that this scenario has also some cons, like the fact that the two FX conversion have to be performed and that to be safe, it is better to wait a few blocks around one hour to be sure that the transaction is fully immutable. This diagram represents the way securities are settled between counterparts. As this picture shows, there is a number of actors and the process is quite complex. The point here is not to detail this process, which is out of the scope for today, but to perceive that over the years we have been building a quite complex process. This comment is a two-edged sword. On one side, it shows room for improvement. On the other, it shows an ecosystem which has been developing over centuries, which is very difficult to replace overnight. Therefore, the blockchain technology will definitely help to optimize, but will grow slowly, in particular in those use cases where the ecosystem is already quite large and in place for years. Just to sense a bit why blockchain is really relevant for the securities industry, let's go in more detail into the securities example. In order to sell a security, you need to prove you have it. In order to buy a security, you need to prove you have the money. Then the delivery versus payment takes place and the ownership is transferred. A programming language set on the top of a blockchain database would simplify this process, possibly disrupting the existing actors. This slide is describing a financial product, which is rather common nowadays. It is a knockout option, which is sold in a note. The point here is not to describe the product, but rather to feel the complexity such a product generates. The counterparts, 
have to synchronize the product representation in, the, in their individual systems in order to have the same product life cycle. Here, this is pretty simple, as the term sheet is rather basic. This would be totally different for an option on a basket or for a more complex product. In the current situation, all the actors have to replicate the product life cycle, forcing reconciliation among the different systems, generating inefficiencies and potential errors. The promise of blockchain v2 is to implement those products directly in the blockchain. As the blockchain is shared, the life cycle would be implemented only once, being immediately shared by all the actors. Likewise, owning such a product would be represented as an unspent transaction which could be sold to a buyer over a blockchain infrastructure. Presenting only the pros of blockchain technology would be a little unfair, as blockchain has also some issues. To replace large ecosystems, blockchain has to be embraced by a large number of actors. Critical mass is needed for such a system to be really useful, and that can be difficult to reach. This is why it is most likely that blockchain will succeed first in smaller ecosystems, either functionally or geographically, and expand from there. Blockchain needs a consensus model to replace the trust a middleman is bringing. The consensus model implemented in Bitcoin is cumbersome and not versatile. For example, market participants may want to hide transactions to their competitors. Another aspect we have already touched is the blockchain throughput, which is not sufficient and is coming from the consensus model. New consensus models will and must be developed. Connection to the existing worlds. Blockchain works nicely in a fully digitalized end world, but needs proxy to connect to existing worlds. Smart contracts validation in another is another issue. How to ensure those contracts are bug free? how to make sure that they reflect the terms and conditions that have been agreed. Let's summarize what we have seen today. What are the main benefits of blockchain? Blockchain solves the double spending problem. It brings trust via crypto proof. It is resilient via distribution. It is fast. It is anonymous. And it is moreover a shared ledger where all the transactions are visible from all participants. What are the main benefits of a shared ledger? A shared ledger is avoiding messages and keeps all the participants in sync. What are the main benefits of smart contracts? It is programmable money modeling cash flows and it's also shared with all the participants. Many thanks for your attention and let's start now the Q&A session.